Joining me now is James Sykes, CEO of Baseload Energy. Yep. That's the and one. the stock ticker is Find, I believe. Yes. And I've been creating some content with you now for I think three or four years. We did a, a live, uh, a live in our Discord channel. Yep. And um, I want to talk, sort of refresh people of your your background in uranium because a lot of people talk very highly of you, my friend. Oh, that's good to hear. Thanks. Um, so, sort of, when did, when did you get involved, and uh, what are what are some of the projects you've worked on? I joined Dennis and Mines in two thousand six, and that's basically when I started my career right out of uni university. So, I got exposed to the Wheeler River project. Yeah. I was part of the discovery team that highlighted what became the the Phoenix and the Griffin target areas. Uh, one of my notable contributions to to that team was relogging historic drill core of ZK04 and ZK06 and noticing the clay alteration there. And I, I'd just gone to a tour of the Millennium deposit before that, saw this wild clay alteration, then taken that back to, to those holes and brought it up to the group and that became Griffin. Mm -hmm. I, I then had the opportunity to join Forum Uranium and they had uh, Ken Wheatley and Boone Tan Two guys who, in my mind, are the you know they're the godfathers of uranium. Basically, they've discovered so many deposits between them. Yeah. So I, I took that opportunity to go learn from those guys. Unfortunately, that was 2008, and the world collapsed. Right. But so the forum had some some difficulties. But at that time, Hathor had made their discovery previously or earlier in that year, and the forum guys got me the job with Hathor. Cool. Yeah, no, that's so that's, that's, that's a stand-up company right there for sure. Yeah. And then Hathor, we were drilling away, and I spent a lot of my time relogging the core, put together the geological model that said, "Hey, we got to, you know, we got to look east-west instead of northeast." And yeah. As soon as we started doing that, we made two more discoveries, and then the Fission made their discovery right after that. That's so, incredible. Yeah, that that trend really really shaped up into a a monster of. Uh, uh, deposit. How did you get involved in this project and why did you decide to take it on? The guys behind the ore group, so Baseload's part of the ore group of companies, it's six different companies all rolled into one. They were looking to get into the uranium space and they were looking for the right guy who could, who knows uranium and, and could pick the targets and pick some projects. They, Obviously so, we know why they picked you because yeah, we just oh, talked about it. Oh, well, my name kept coming across their desk. So yeah. they reached out and said, hey, you know, this is what we want to do. We want you to do this. So I thought about it and said, "Yeah, sure, let's go for it." And I, you know, we hit it off the the first meeting we had with them, and it was really great. Uh, Stephen Stewart, phenomenal guy. Uh, Charles Beaudry, we we jived on our on the technical expertise. Mm -hmm. We both had such similar ideas on on how to advance a company and and uh, develop this Athabasca 2.0 exploration model that we're using. So it was a no brainer for me at that point. Explain the 2.0 for people that don't understand what that is. For sure. It's, in a sense, it's actually Athabasca 0.0. .0 right. Because we're going back to the origins of, of what what makes the Athabasca the Athabasca. We all know it's high grade. That's, you know, that's why people explore that area. You can find the richest uranium deposits in the world there. But how many of those deposits actually get mined? And it's, right. a, it's a really interesting number. Very few of them. The, the biggest of the biggest get mined, so your MacArthur River, Cigar Lake, and those are the only two underground deposits that are mined in the Athabasca Basin itself, and they, they have their challenges. But the other deposits that have been mined have all been open pits. Mm -hmm. And it, it, that's the story, like that's what creates, that, that's what's built all of the mills in the Athabasca, are open pits, open pits, open pits. So after the Arrow discovery, that's when a lot of this this whole idea really developed for how we can find these these high grade deposits that are all basement hosted. You have no sandstone to worry about, right. but shallower. So if you consider back in the day, and this is where Athabasca 2.0 differs from Athabasca 0, 0.0, is that we know how big the Athabasca basin is today, but it's it's a really old basin, like it's 1.7 billion years old. So it's been eroded and glaciated. So originally, the belief is that that basin was a lot larger, and it could have even connected with the Thelon Basin in the Northwest Territory, so it would have been a huge basin. I've got reason to believe that it, that it has. Mm -hmm. If that's the case, then there, there's no reason to believe that the basin um, that was eroded would have continued up at a, at a certain slope. Basin morphology 
plateaus. So you, you, you have a sub-basin, then everything plateaus. So you can step outside of the edge of the basin nowadays and still think that you're close to where the unconformity would have been. So if we go back and look at Arrow, Arrow is something like this. And the high-grade core of Arrow is about 500 meters beneath the surface. So if you let nature do its work and you start glaciating and eroding everything, get rid of the sandstone, you get rid of some of the basement rocks. It comes more than the top. Exactly. So you can you can bring an aero deposit within a hundred meters or shallower, or maybe even two hundred meters from surface. Right. That's the economics behind it. Of course. And you consider something like MacArthur River Pod Two. You no, know, it's it, the dimensions on it are wild. It's eighty meters by sixty meters by forty meters. Twenty percent U three hundred eight. That's a two hundred million pound deposit. Right. So you can have these really small nuggets. Yeah. And just they can be there. Yeah, it reminds me of like a nickel sulfide deposit that, you know, can be small, but yep. super high grade. Yep, yeah. exactly. Usually I like to focus uh, when, we, when we start these is on the management. We talked about you. Um, let's go back to other team members um, and, and maybe let's discuss some of your staff and, and, you know, who you have on the technical team and all that. Yep. So we'll round it out. The technical team is rounded out by Mr. Cameron McKay. He's our VP Exploration. Absolutely brilliant geologist. He's, uh, man, he's really smart. He, he knows his geology in and out. He's worked in the uranium industry and uh, and other commodities, so he, he's well versed and has a lot of experience behind him. So he, he definitely complements everything that we do at Baseload and is responsible for a lot of what we do. Like even with the advancing Accio to, to where we've gotten it today, uh, Cameron's really been the guy behind all of that. So uh, phenomenal. Uh, we've got a lot of uh, junior staff with us who are who are you know cutting their teeth on in the uranium industry as well and they're all ah, they're all hard workers yeah they're all yeah they're all beautiful people like the, the type of people that I love to surround myself with because they're again they're dedicated they're hard workers and they just they want to succeed they've right. got that drive for success and that's that's exactly what we're, we're looking for on the admin side uh, they're all the ore group, which yeah. is which is based out of here in Toronto. Uh, again, Stephen Stewart, who is our chairman, he's our he's our financial guru. Guru. He's uh, Stephen's a great guy. He's launched a number of companies. He's had a lot of success. Like, I think four the uh, four of the ore group companies within within the past year have all had very big successes, huge deposits, a lot of development potential, and that's just you know you, you don't do that by just getting lucky all the time. Yeah. You you create your own luck. And that's, Steven's the guy to do that. Like so you're he's, saying he's a winner. Oh, Steven's a huge winner. Yeah. Absolutely. Like the group, the org group and the people behind it are such an amazing, uh, such an amazing team. So we've got all of their support here in Toronto and- And resources. And resources, yeah. We share a lot of resources. We share a lot of expertise and knowledge. Uh, yeah, it's, it's such a great uh, combination to, to have. Awesome. Okay, uh, your capital structure. How many um, how many shares are out on this thing now? We have about 91 million shares outstanding. Okay. And we've got about another 30 million warrants and options. The share price right now is around that 40 cent mark. Uh, you know, if we were doing this about a year ago, share price was up over a dollar. I remember that. It, we've, we've, we, we did touch at 100 million market cap last year, which yeah. was an absolutely phenomenal success for such a young company. You know, we, we listed in June of 2020, so yeah. we're very young. Uh, obviously the market is what it is today, but we're still confident that things will, will continue to go up for us. Yes. We've, um, we've got a lot of warrants that are that are uh, hopefully going to be exercised this year. What, uh, what's the strike price on them? The next ones up are about 40 cents. Okay, so you're not far from being in the money there. No, exactly. So the, now on both sides, what do, you, what do you got in the till right now? We've got about 8 million in the bank and okay. about two of that is flow through. Okay. So we it's going into the ground. Yes, exactly. And you know, to, to kickstart Accio this year, that's exactly where where that we can launch that off nicely. Uh, exploration is exploration. We you know with the with the other six million that we have in the bank, it's all hard dollars. Given the way that the market is today, do we want to really spend all of that? Yeah. Not really. Would would rather preserve it. Who knows what's going to happen in the market? What about institutional support? Do you have any? We've got a lot of institutional support. We don't have any major institutional shareholder. There's, uh, geez, I would say about six of them who are all uh, equally invested. Invested. Yes. What about like M two? 
or uh, Sashikov? Sashikov? Neither. Neither, okay. Sachem? Yeah. Sachem Kov, sorry. Yes, okay, I think of those two. Um, I'm, actually, I think I'm two is in. Yeah? Yeah, I'm pretty sure they are. If I was looking at a pie chart, what, do you, what would you say is retail versus institutional or, you know? Retail is probably about 30%, institutional is probably about 60%. Okay, and do you, do you know what your ownership is on, in this thing? About 10%. You got 10%? Yeah. Buddy, yeah. right there, my friend. Yeah. Well, You've got a lot of incentive to find a discovery. Oh, exactly. Oh, More uh, than you ever have in your career. Yeah. So you're going to want, okay, got it. No, that's, it's it. not, we're all driven by discovery. We're very he heavily incentivized to, to really propel this, uh, propel this company forward and make more discoveries. Uh, so a lot of that, that 10% really, the majority of that is through one of our sister companies who we did the spin out from QC Copper and Gold. Okay. So it is, it's all part of the ore group. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, the ore group's done a lot of spin outs like that. So we're all kind of connected. Yeah. Um, well, smart, because you're hedged. You're hedged, right? No. Yeah, yeah, that's good. I like it. Yeah. I, this deposit, what, what kind of makes it unique? Too many things make it unique. Okay. Like I've, I'm very bullish on this. And, uh, you know, maybe I'm tooting my own horn here, but I think that this is probably some of the easiest and quickest uranium to be developed in the world. Like it, it's the most accessible when you really put it into context. You don't have to dig deep underground. It's within 25 meters from surface. So everybody knows hockey. The width of a hockey rink yeah. is 25 meters. Right. That's all you have to do. You have to scrape away 25 meters of overburden so there's no blasting required. You just need heavy machinery to, to scoop this stuff away to, to, to remove it. And you've got mineralization sitting right there. That's open pit material. Yeah. That's what really makes this thing shine. It's just the economics behind that to 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 get to where we are. You know, we don't we don't require uh, a lot of road building. We're only 30 kilometers from a from a hull road that supplies mines already. Mm -hmm. Power line is right there as well. So we're not out in the middle of the boonies. Now, that's not capital intensive to put that road in, and then it's not capital intensive to, to remove that overburden, to get access to mineralization that is right there. So what what are your next steps to get yourself to a feasibility study and you know all the economics? What what what, what what's your plan here? We're currently doing a little bit of the feasibility study right now, okay. like just little bits here and there as we progress towards uh, mineral resource, and that's that's the next big push that we're trying to do. Yeah. So. Since the discovery in 2021, we've put about uh, 22,000 meters into this into this discovery, uh, 80 drill holes, and we figure that we're we're basically right there that we can get to an indicated resource, and we're going to try to push hard for that that we can get that done hopefully by Q4 this year, Q1 next year. Okay. And I guess that's that's another of the the big benefits of having this type of discovery is that it's shallow, so we're not drill, drilling as deep. We can drill a number of drill holes in a short period of time to, to advance a, a resource estimate, to, to advance uh, feasibility. So everything's expedited with these type of discoveries. So we're going we're gonna to keep pushing hard and hopefully, now the plan is to, to start drilling by May, June of this year. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, we've got the two million in flow through that, that we're committing to Accio to start it all off. Yeah. You know, it's junior exploration. so. Uh, Two million is not going to fund our our plans, so we will have to uh, we will have to raise some more money to complete to complete the entire program that we want to do. Uh, we do have some other exploration that we want to get done at Catharsis as well, uh, just some airborne geophysical surveys, and plus our shadow project. We want to we want to put some more geophysics on that project. So we're you know, very very active in the the months to come. Uh, I guess as of as of May, we hope to be continuously putting out news. Accio is the the main focus, though, right? Yes. Oh, okay. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, what's your cost cost of drilling? Because I know you got some helicopter stuff going yeah. on, right? So that's always going to get a little expensive. Yeah. The transportation to Canada, yeah, they've they've changed a lot of things. Yeah. You can't fly twelve hours. Pilot can't fly twelve hours a day. They can only fly ten hours a day. So when you consider that you've got shift changes that for the drill crew, and they're usually working twelve hours. Yeah, it's so, an awkward number. Yeah, it's so things like that are going to affect our drill program. So uh, we don't know the full uh, the full details behind everything, but things like that you, you need now you need two pilots on site. Yeah. So your your costs are going to go up with that fuel and and um, 
uh, inflation, costs are going up. Yeah. Last year, we were about 425, 450 meters all in cost. So that's, that's management, that's drilling, that's geochemistry, it's everything all in. All the way down to the toilet paper. Yeah. So we're, we're thinking that probably around 450, 500 bucks a meter all in cost this year would would be about right. So if we're gonna do 10,000 meters, you know, it's, a, it's a five million drill program. You're right. And you're very confident with your targets? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, you seem, yeah. You seem it. And, uh, yeah, with, and with the model that Cameron's put together, we've got some very exceptional targets at Accio, like with the, the definition drilling that we want to get done at Accio, we, and that's the thing about these, these deposits, right? I don't know if people follow UEC, but UEC had this amazing news release yesterday. Uh, was it yesterday? Yeah, I think it was yesterday. 17% uh, over seven meters or something like that. Right. But if you look at the map, it's, you know, the high grade core is over a 40 meter, 40 meter wide strike length. Our drill holes we're all 50 meters apart. So you can you can fit one of these high grade cores between where we've been drilling. Yeah. And we just, we wouldn't know right now because we haven't drilled it obviously. So we do have to do that a little bit more definition drilling. We do have to see you know, if these high grade cores exist and with the, the work that we're doing right now and that Cameron's been doing, we will, you know, we, we've got some very nice, what I think are juicy looking targets to, to continue advancing Accu on, on the definition side. Then we've got a little bit more of uh, targets Right with, right on the periphery of Accio, like one of them is a, a sandstone sandstone target. Uh, we we think we have unconformity uranium potential to the southeast of of Accio, like just right uh, stones throw away basically. Okay, what are your goals uh, for the next say two quarters? What what will you consider success for for your goals? Number one is launching the drill program in Accio. Okay. That's the big push, and you know, we're permitted for it. We're in, we've got the funding to start it all off, so we will definitely be deploying that. And that should be about May, June. We'll get back up there and, and get the drills turning. Drill, drill, drill. That's the big push for Accio. True That's exploration company. Yeah, well, it's drill or die, right? That's right. Yeah. And we've, we've got such an amazing deposit, we just need to really firm it out now. And, and Kind of get a kind of get a sense of how big this is really going to be so we have to get that done yeah you know, that that's a big priority we will have results come back from our catharsis program and we'll 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 update when that's back we're very happy with everything that we did there very successful program um but yeah accio is going to be the big focus moving forward okay uh what conferences are you going to in the next few months or you know four months say uh, actually i have quite a few are you, going to, are you going to Europe at all? Or? Yes, I have some investment conferences in Europe that I'll be attending this month and next month. Okay. Um, I'm also going to go to a couple of uranium-specific conferences. I, huh, I have been invited to speak at the IAEA URAM conference, which is they hold it once every five years. Where's and that? In, uh, in Austria. Really? Yeah. When, so, when is it? In May. Okay. So I've. So I, I get to speak there and I'm gonna talk about the Athabasca 2.0 strategy and how we, you know, if this, if this strategy takes off with success like Accio, mm -hmm. then we can put the Athabasca back on the map as being the preeminent uranium jurisdiction in the world. Thanks for joining us and I'm sure we'll catch up with you later on and, you know, see where you're at with the drill or results, this and that, catch up with you at a conference. Absolutely.